Hey guys, welcome to another EDH Deck Tech episode brought to you by the Command Valley. I'm your host, Landon, and I'm super excited to be bringing this week's Deck Tech episode to you. So Modern Horizons is here, and there's been a lot of talk about this new buggy commander, and that is Grist the Hunger Tide. Now, it's a planeswalker that is an insect everywhere else but in play, so it can actually be your commander, even though it's a planeswalker, and it doesn't have that line, it can be your commander, as all the other planeswalker commanders have previously had this is a super unique card and honestly looking at this list and looking at the other lists for grist super cool stuff going on so grist costs three mana and he has this static ability that says as long as he isn't on the battlefield he is a 1-1 insect creature in addition to its other types his plus one ability makes a 1-1 black and green insect creature token, and then you are going to mill a card. If an insect is milled this way, you repeat the process of making a token, milling a card, and putting a loyalty counter on Grist. His minus two ability is you can sacrifice a creature, and when you do, you can destroy target creature or planeswalker. His minus five says each opponent loses life equal to the number of creature cards in your graveyard. Note that he doesn't particularly care about the type of creatures in your graveyard. It could be insects, it could be not, and he still is going to drain your opponents. So for my deck tech, I am focusing a lot on his first ability, being able to mill cards from our library, make insects, and I'm playing a lot of insects so as to make sure we can mill a bunch of cards and get Grist super big, and then close out the game with his minus five. You know, it's possible that we could activate that a couple times in a game, especially with how this deck is constructed. So I think that is a super valid win con. So I'm going to do something a little bit differently today. I'm going to actually not talk about all of the ramp and the interaction and some of the other cards in the deck. I just kind of feel like talk about the same cards often. You all know that they're going to be, there's going to be a soul ring, a secure a tribe elder and a bunch of different ramp spells. They are going to be in the deck list. So if you are interested in seeing the type of ramp spells and the interaction spells that I'm playing, you can find those there as well as the mana base. I really just kind of want to talk about the synergy of this deck and what this deck has going for it. I kind of want this to be kind of a springboard or like a starting place if you want to build your own Grist deck and your meta is probably going to be different from mine. So the interactive pieces and the ramp pieces are probably going to differ, but the main synergy of the deck I think is what is the most important thing to talk about. I'm playing in the range of like 20 insects and that is a little bit low, but we do have a trick up our sleeves to make sure that we can consistently mill them from the top of our library with Grist. So I'm just going to go over the bugs really quickly. I'm not gonna stop and talk about everything that they do, but they will show up on screen. So we're playing a Scoot Swarm, a Caustic Caterpillar, a Hornet Queen, Scoot Mob, Hornet Nest, Masaryk Crawl Death Priest, Bane of the Living, Blight Beetle, Brood Hatch Nantuko, Realm Walker, which is a really weird looking bug, Masked Vandal, which is also a weird looking bug, Nantuku Husk, Caustic Wasps, Nantuko Elder, a Grave Shifter, which really weird looking bug, Hex Parasite, Xanted Swarm, Glean Crawler, Dead Bridge Goliath, Moldgraph Monstrosity, Gigapede, which sounds like a Pokemon, Giant Ataphage and Living Hive. Now we are playing some massive insects towards the end there. Glean Crawler, Deadbridge Goliath, Moldgraph Monstrosity, Gigapede, which sounds like a Pokemon, Giant Ataphage and Living Hive. These are massive bugs and we are playing some reanimator cards. That's kind of a sub theme. So in addition to our commander milling us, we've got other ways in the deck. We've got some dredgers to fill our graveyard up really quickly. And with our commander being able to drain our opponents, while that is really strong and can close out games, I put in some ways of getting big beaters from our graveyard out into play so those those big beaters can help us close out games as well. So I mentioned that we are playing some dredge cards and if you're unfamiliar with dredge, how it works is if you have a creature in your graveyard with the mechanic dredge and you go to draw a card and instead of drawing the card, you can instead mill and let's say for example, you have Stinkweed Imp in your graveyard with a dredge five. Instead of drawing, you just mill five cards from your library into your graveyard and then you get the Stinkweed Imp back into your hand. So we're playing Stinkweed Imp, we're playing Golgari Thug and we are playing Golgari Grave Troll. We've also got ways of getting cards back from our graveyard. We've got a turtle witness and timeless witness timeless witness is a new card from modern horizons and i really like it because we can 
basically play it from our graveyard for seven mana, which is a lot, but if we're already trying to mill cards and want, we want a lot of creatures in our graveyard, it's a really good card. We've also got a Nyx Weaver, which helps with our mill engine, and we can exile it from our graveyard to return cards to our hand. And we've also got some other, I guess, like creature payoffs. Um, we've got Beast Whisperer, which lets us draw a card every time we cast a creature spell. Species Specialist, which we can choose a creature type when it ETBs, and whenever a creature of the chosen type dies, we get to draw a card. We're gonna choose Bug, obviously. Grim Harvest Specs is going to let us draw a card every time a non-token creature we control dies, and we are playing a lot of those. Corpse Augur, when it dies, we draw cards equal to the number of cards in target player's graveyard. We're gonna choose ours. We're gonna have a lot of creatures in our graveyard. We also have Vraska Golgari Queen, which her plus two lets us sacrifice a permanent to gain a life and draw a card. Her minus three can destroy an online permanent with CMC three or less. And her minus nine is we get an emblem with whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, that player loses the game. That is also a really cool win con. So this deck is playing a lot of creatures. Uh, we really are wanting to make the most of our commander's minus five ability and we want to be playing as many insects as possible to uh, take advantage of his plus one ability if we want this deck to function pretty well and um not want it to just be playing all of the really bad janky insect tokens we're playing a couple of cards that let us manipulate the top of our library so we've got forever young grave purge foot bottom feast and bone harvest now the latter three at instant speed can let us put any number of creature cards from our graveyard on top of our library and let us draw a card. Now this is so good because we can spend a lot of the early to mid game just milling cards from our library, you know, getting our draw pieces into place, you know, kind of just hanging back, doing our own thing. And then at instant speed on somebody's end step, you know, return a bunch of insects from our graveyard to the top of our library, activate our commander, mill a bunch, make our commander have a ridiculous amount of loyalty, and hopefully we can hold out until next turn where we can activate his minus five and take everybody out. Forever Young is just kind of the oddball out in that trio, um, sorcery speed, but only costs two mana. And what I like about all of these cards is they replace themselves too. So they're not ultimately dead because they can replace themselves and with the other ones being instant speed it's super cool and even if we aren't trying to go for the combo one maybe if like just you know a beast whisperer got milled and we want it or a species specialist or you know we actually just want to cast some of our insects we can totally do that we've also got a plumb forbidden in that mix it's another really good card draw spell uh we can when we cast it we can sacrifice a creature and for each creature that we sacrifice that spell is going to be copied and we're going to draw a card and lose a life our commander makes a one one creature token with his plus one so that's really cool it works really well with aristocrat synergies things that let us sacrifice creatures for value are basically are really they interact really well with our commander now we've got other ways of getting things back from our graveyard in the instant and sorcery category we got balaged recovery which is essentially a free spell it is a mdfc for three mana we can return a card from our graveyard to our hand and on the back side it's a land We've also got a regrowth, which for two mana can get us anything back from our graveyard and a treasured find, which can do the same for two mana, but we have to exile it after it's done. And then we've got some reanimator stuff. So we've got a victimize, a dread return and a blood for bones. So these are really good reanimator spells. And we've also got a living death, which oftentimes is just going to be a game winner. I'd also feel remiss if I didn't throw a skull clamp into this deck because that essentially turns our commander's plus one into a draw two, which is really good. We can clamp a creature for one mana and it gets plus one minus one. And when it dies, we draw two cards. So that's really good. And the last card I'm gonna go over for this deck tech is a spider spawning. It can give us a tremendous amount of one twos spiders. If for whatever reason our commander gets removed before we can activate his minus five and we can get you know we can get some type of return for milling a bunch of things into our graveyard and with that this deck deck is coming to a close thank you guys so much for tuning into this week's episode let us know down in the comment section if you kind of like this faster style deck tech where we don't really go over the interaction or the ramp or just the mana base just kind of the things that usually stay the same between deck to deck in my opinion i kind of like it um after watching a lot of deck techs on the internet from a wide variety of different content creators most of the time I'm just looking for like the main synergy of a commander just to know if I'm going to like that commander or not or if it seems interesting to me and then once they start talking about the ramp the interaction stuff like that stuff that isn't like super specific to the commander I just kind of lose interest so and if you are just maybe not sure if you want to build the commander and you just kind of want to see how the deck works unimpeded from just like the non bow cards or the cards that don't have a lot of synergy with the commander that that was kind of the point for this video so 
Again, thank you guys so much for tuning into this week's episode. You guys are awesome. We really couldn't do this without the help of all of our Patreons and our subscribers. And if you like our content and you want to continue seeing more deck techs every Monday and gameplay videos, you can hit that subscribe button to stay on up to date on all of those videos. And if you're interested in supporting the channel directly, you can head on over to our Patreon at patreon.com slash command valley to sign up today. We've got a bunch of different tiers. You get access to a bunch of different channels on our Discord. You can play games with us. You get merch. Merch. we send you guys cards it's honestly a ton of fun we have a lot of fun over on our discord again a huge shout out to our patrons and our subscribers you guys are awesome and i hope you guys have a wonderful week